ladies, brains versus beauty. We're talking about the significance of your roles as well as just you as a person, not only on HBCU campuses, like, but you guys have been enjoying and been a part of the first Endless Rain Queen Summit mm -hmm. thus far this week, right? So you guys kind of heard some things and went through some things so far as the conferences, not the conferences, but the sessions and such, right? So I just want to talk to you all, just kind of talk more in depth about the roles in which you guys hold in your campuses. But like, I understand there's some stereotypical mindsets when it comes to those type of roles. So one question I would like to ask you all, why royalty? Why be queen and not be SGA president? Don't you feel like, some people feel like SGA presidents, presidents can be more impactful versus you know, being a queen to where you just, you know, you're the queen crown, you get your coronation dress, and, you know, you can look pretty all the time. That's a stereotype in my opinion, so let's talk about that stereotype. Yeah? Okay. Okay, well, I chose to become um, queen of my university um, mainly because I watched the people who were before me, and the stereotype was burning me up, like, they were actually proving it to be right. So I did sit um, on the Senate prior to becoming Miss Bowie State University, and I wanted to show the people that it's not just about the face. I can bring the work to the royal side, So, and that's what I'm doing. So that was my main reason. Yes. <laughs> my name is Deanna Nelson. I am a senior psychology major from Fort Washington, Maryland. And I serve as the 73rd Miss Bowie State University. Um, so for myself, I'm Jada Chris, Miss Tennessee State University. And for me, I've never been in SGA before. This is, you know, a new role for me. But I felt like the queen was more closer to the people. You know, the SGA president handles the business, but I also am a business major. You know, I've had these internships. I've had these opportunities, so I feel like I could do both at once. I could be this businesswoman, but I also could show you how to cure yourself as well. And so I know that the queen was close to the people, and that's what I wanted to be with the people. So the people's choice. Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Walker, a senior mass communications and speech minor from Durham, North Carolina, and I serve as the 80th Miss Winston-Salem State University. And to piggyback off of my queen sisters, um, I always thought I was going to be SGA president. That was, was my goal when I started college. But when I got in the role, too, I saw that people had those stereotypes and that the queen was just a pretty face. Um, but she's so much more. And for me, I wanted to bring the element of she can do both. If she really wanted to, she could run for the SGA president. She just chose not to. And I also wanted to change what some of my classmates felt like a queen looked like. And I wanted that face to be different for Winston-Salem State University. And that's what motivated me to choose queen over SGA president. Awesome. I like that a lot. Okay, thank you. Next question. Tell me. Do you feel like you guys make an impact on your campuses? Mm -hmm. Being queen, that is, you know. And if so, give me a quick um, I definitely believe that I've had an impact on my campus. Um, similar to like what Deanna said, um, I feel like a lot of times past queens on my campus, I love them to death and I feel like everyone's reign is different and unique to them. However, I feel like I wanted to be the queen to other people that I felt like I needed. Um, so I've had sister circles and I have sister circles every Wednesday. Um, and I think also about being a queen, God has just moved in my life um, and helped me to see my passion and my purpose to love on people and support into people. And I think that is the significance of being a queen. And um, my title as Miss Lincoln University of Pennsylvania has really allowed me to just move in people's lives and to pour into our students' lives because a lot of times we don't see what a lot of them are going through um, and to just guide them throughout their college experience because a lot of times we think that, oh, we just need to advocate for their needs and just make sure they get everything that they want out of their college experience, but how are we helping to heal them? How are we helping to see them through their college experience? So that, I feel like that's the way I've kind of had an impact on my college campus. For me personally, I came in at a time when royalty on my campus almost lost its value. So my goal as Miss Cheney University was to change the culture. And that even made SGA step up because that's another reason they were slacking. I'm like, all right, I don't want to be a part of that. And I just didn't see myself there. So just 
changing the culture and making everyone step up, starting programs, being more involved with the freshmen. They came and started events with the freshmen and just making an impact on them, academic success, and that's what we focus on now. I'm starting a program and people are seeing that queens have value and that we set the tone for our universities and I feel like we make impact, so yes. I am Kiana Roberts, the 47th Miss Cheney University of Pennsylvania. Hey everyone, I am Tykeria Moore, Miss Fort Valley State University, and I say yes, we make a great impact on our campus, especially for the females. Um, I had many females come up to me, ask me, how do you do it? Because before, I was very like shy, I was scared to speak in public, but um, taking on that challenge has um, made me become better. And so they want to do the same thing, so I told them, just do it, pray fast, and just keep going, keep going. Don't let anything stop you. So I feel like we make a great impact on our campus by doing that. What would you say to that person that says you're just a face? That's your role. Take pictures where you're talking about your you know, where you're proud, where you stash. You know, what do you say to that person? You know, that's why you came. <laughs> Okay, I am Kiana Hunter, the 95th Miss Lincoln University of Missouri. And for that question, I don't feel like you have to say anything. Just show them who you are, show them that you're more than a face, show them that you do the work, throw events, program, and they'll see it. You won't have to say it. <laughs> like she said, we prove it. I hold four other positions on campus other than being machiney. So if we were just the face, we would just be just being machiney and not trying to branch out and learn other things and learn different situations. So we're not just the face. We are actually leaders who evolve. So I think that that stereotype of being just a face is crazy. Hello, I am Courtney Natasha Ingram, and I currently serve as the 77th Miss Benedict College. And for me, it's more than just being the face because I'm just like you. Um, I get up every day. I go to class every day. Um, I dress up. I put on my sweatpants sometimes, no makeup, but it's all about understanding the person and understanding that my story, my story matters more than just showing up every day. Like if I can just have a conversation with you and be transparent, I think that's more than just, you know, putting on a crown, putting on a sash. It's more than just, you know, just walking past you. I can say, how are you today? Or tell me something that happened in your life today. And we can connect that way. So it's more than just I just put on all of these outfits and stuff. It's more than just throwing events. It's more, it's literally more than that because the way that you impact people through transparency and how you really see them and you really see a person for genuinely who they are, it makes more sense. It means this is what my crown means. This is what my sash means. This is what it means to get up every day and put on a pair of heels or put on some makeup or go to an event. It's the fact that I'm connected with you. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people, and even including me before I even um, got into the role, underestimate all that misses do for their universities. I would have never thought I would be as, as many dinners, talking to as many alumni, advocating to the city about the importance of my HBCU. And, and then you see yourself in capacities where um, you're, you're in those spaces on social media, you're, you're talking about your school, you're talking about your students all the time, you're called to places you never thought you would be. And people don't, people don't see that on the miss side. And then on top of that, you got to look pretty good while you do it. So it's like, we're more than a faith. Yeah, and, and to add to that, I would definitely say um, one of the biggest impacts and how I think that we are more than just a pretty face is that we really inspire the students and um, the inspiration that we give to students inspires them to become student leaders. And then once you become a student leader, that then you go to becoming an active alumni. And then after becoming an active alumni, you then become someone distinguished in the black community. And then now you are inducted into the NBCA Hall of Fame, you know, and representing your university. And it goes so much further than just wearing a sash and crown. We really have an impact on someone. And I think it's really about helping students um, leave their mark and helping them to find their purpose and then really also helping them to find a love for their university. I know I can speak for all of us. We really have a love for our HBCUs. And me personally, my HBCU has changed my life. And um, 
because of my transparency, like Courtney said, has allowed other students to find that love and say, you know what, I love how Courtney loves her HBCU. So let me try to find that same love for Lincoln, like how she loves Lincoln. And then when she find, once they find that love, it's just like, oh my gosh, like let me be involved now. Let me give back to the school. Let me donate. Nothing, yeah. nothing changes it. You're just like, it's just so much HBCU pride. Last question. What is something you all wanted to do? What's one thing, and everybody got to answer this one, somewhat briefly, but I want to make sure you get it out. What's one thing that you want to do that you cannot seem to accomplish? I don't want to start. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll pass it down. Okay. Um, I'm... Something that I want to do, but I can't seem to accomplish. I'm not going to say that I can't accomplish it. I'm just going to say that it hasn't been done yet, but I plan to do it before my reign is over. Um, being a queen has really been an experience for me. I've learned so much about myself. And a lot of people have poured into me, like poured into us all, because we've been at the same conferences and things like that. So I want to make sure that I give that back to the ladies on my campus because I feel like they need it like I needed it when I got it. So yeah, that's one thing that I want to accomplish. One thing that I haven't accomplished, but I will this semester is collabor um, forming a collaboration with the um, queens of other organizations on my campus. Um, there's a big division with the Royal Court and organization queens. Like it's, yeah. I think it is everywhere. You know, it's just boy of court, and you know, everybody knows their place. But I feel like if it becomes more unity, then just like Kiana just said, pouring in to them the information that I receive, and then they can pour into their organizations. Like I can't, we can't reach every single woman on our campus. But if we are in connection with the queens or the people who run the specific organizations, then we'll be able to accomplish that. So. Just being united as one. If I can just impact one person, that's enough for me. But um, more so to impact more people. But for me, I'm not going to say it's not impossible because it will happen. I speak, you know, positively and great things that will happen. Um, it will be like a using the things that were poured into me and using them like for a, a week of experience or a weekend of experience, like I'm some type of explosion, women's explosion, where the people that that poured into me, they could come and actually sit down and have those conversations or those sessions, that one-to-one -one thing where they can just understand it and see how it has impacted me and why they really need that person or they need a mentor or a coach or somebody in life, how that could really shift and really make them see like, I'm value. Like, I am value. When I walk into a room, I am value, and this is why I want to do this, 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 and this. So it just makes sense to me. It comes full circle. Um, I have two things, but I'm just say one. Um, before my reign is over, I wanted to do a mini boot camp for the kings, but for the kings and queens that um that does the pageant wins the um position and like get them prepared for like the compasses we go to. Um, tell them about how to dress, um, proper etiquette, um, how to do public speaking and get over their nervousness, um, how to do interviews, a lot of stuff to prepare them for their uh, reign. So that's one thing I want to do. One of my goals is ensuring that the next Royal Court has adequate funding to fund their entire conferences. I didn't get to go to the other conferences. This is my first one. So I just want them to get that experience and, you know, just to be able to lead them and guide them and be like, okay, this is what you have to do. This is what you need to expect. So I just think that making sure that they have adequate funding, I didn't have it, but I'm just worried about the next court and then how they could use that same strategy to prepare each court going on. Um, one thing I haven't done yet that I know I will do is, um, I, one, I love education and I love everything about the HBCU experience. And so one of my goals is to get high school students and uh, middle school students to kind of get a glimpse of the HBCU experience and uh, see the value that it has and see how important it is to us and how it has changed so many people's lives. And I think that will then... Um, bring more attention to HBCUs and also for the whole world to see the impact that we have because the HBCU history is like American history and black history and African, the African American experience is the American experience. 
And um, I really, my goal is to get people to understand that. Um, I think one of my major goals was that any Winston woman would feel like she could be the Winston woman as Miss Winston Salem State University. Mm -hmm. And I won't be able to see that until election seasons in the next couple of years. But I hope that anyone who has that willingness to serve the university and represents feels like she can enter this space and dominate it and be great at it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, Okay, I've been holding out because the one thing that I really want to do that I'm really nervous to do is cooking with the queen. So um, I basically want to do a blog that's a talk show, but I'll be cooking and I have like special guests on every episode and they'll have a different topic. So I wanted to take up topics during the Courtyard Wednesday. So um, if majority of the topics are, you know, with self-confidence, I want to have a session about self-confidence, but also teach them how to make meals that they can prepare on campus. So um, that's what I really want to do, but I'm really nervous about it. Um, Reality TV is not really me, but... (laughs) I want you guys to hold me accountable and um, make sure that I accomplish that before. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to piggyback off what um, Kiana said um, when she was talking about funding for conferences. Um, my provost came to me. He was like, you know, a good idea f- um, for you to leave a legacy for Fort Valley is... Um, getting alumni to donate or adopt someone off Royal Court and pay for their wardrobe. Because that's like really hard for us. Like we have bills or we just don't you have a job or anything, no um stipend to pay for your outfit. So it's a struggle for most Royal Courts to do that. So they have to find the cheapest outfit, something look really good or repeat it over and over. So I was like, I can do that but it's kinda hard. But I really want to do that to help people in the the queens and kings in the future. So that's my goal to do that before my reign is over. And I'm praying to God that I can do it. Cause alumni, you know, sometimes it's a lot of money for like how many people on the court? Like 14 people on the court. That's a lot of people. So yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. Oh wow. Okay, they're here. Yeah, we start. We only got our um, main court and our class kings and queens. That's it. So, yeah. Well, ladies, um, I just want, one. I want to say, um, whatever it is you want to accomplish, do it. You know, but sometimes we you might not be able to finish it when you start it while you're in your reign. private thing that you want to finish for yourself, right. never give up on those goals either. That's one thing I want to encourage you all to know, that at the end of the day, yes, you are the queen of your institution, but yet it's your name to bring up the title. You mm-hmm. have to take care of the name first. Right. The right. name is everything else. Right. If you don't take care of yourself, you're going to be good. Right? Like, mm-hmm. the, couple, the, the analogy I always tell people, the uh, couple is over. You know, you always say that analogy. Right, so right. What I've learned, because I tell myself all the time, because I'm a giver, I'm a big giver, and I think we've all been there, done that, right? Yeah. But I learned that uh, with my cup, when it says running over, everything that runs over my cup is what I'm allowed and able to give away. Mm-hmm. So I tend to get the content within the cup. Mm-hmm. They run way too fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other people, I'm, I'm not parched. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to take time to enjoy the contents of your cup. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not going to say you guys are having nobody. Right? <laughs> and bless you when somebody else bless you. And when God bless you, mm-hmm. you see, take that pause mm-hmm. you know? Uh, I know some of y'all are exiting out of college. Hey, do what you will. Be ready to get started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, I just want to say, I respect you guys highly. I really feel like the Black woman is the most underrated, uh, disrespected sure. person on this planet. Um, I love women. My mom was raised by herself uh, my whole life. I give no kudos to no man for that, for what she's done for me. Um, and I just love women. I just respect them highly. So I appreciate y'all not only just serving the institution for being educated Black women willing to pass down legacy and pass down the knowledge and all the stuff that comes with it with your title. So keep on keeping on. <laughs> and then what you do. Thank you for joining in. These are the Queen's brains and beauty. Yes, they're beautiful and they got the brains and they got the power. Yes. We see y'all later. Appreciate you. Bye.